Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Bismillah. Alhamdulillah. Salatu wassalamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Islam, the way of life. Welcome to our new series of Ikra TV. I'm your host, Abul Hasna. I hope you enjoyed our last two episodes. We're going to continue on from there on looking at the life of the Prophet, looking at some good deeds. But before we do all of that, inshallah, let's start the show like where we start out with some nice recitation. أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم يسألونك عن الأنفال قل الأنفال رسول فاتقوا الله وأصلحوا ذات بينكم وأطيعوا الله ورسوله وجلت قلوبهم وإذا تليت عليهم وإذا تليت عليهم آياته زادتهم إيمانا وعلى ربهم يتوكلون الذين يقيمون الصلاة ومن رزقناهم ينفقون أولئك هم المؤمنون حقا لهم درجات عند ربهم ومغفرة ورزق كريم كما أخرجك ربك من بيتك بالحق وإن فريقا من المؤمنين الأكارهون يجادلونك في الحق بعدما تبينك أنما يساقون إلى الموت يساقون إلى الموت وهم ينظرون صدق الله العظيم MashaAllah, some beautiful recitation. Um, alhamdulillah, I'm really pleased you've joined us for the show and I'm really pleased I've got three guests here. Welcome back, young man. Would you like to do salam, introduce yourself and give us your age? Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My name is Suleiman and I'm eight years old. Welcome back, Suleiman. Young man in the middle, do you want to do salam, introduce yourself and your age? Assalamu alaikum. My name is Omar and I'm nine years old. MashaAllah. And we have a new guest today, young man. Do you want to do salam? And tell us your name and your age. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Yasin and I'm 10 years old. MashaAllah. So we have Suleiman, Omar, and Yasin. And we have all of you guys at home. Alhamdulillah. That's brilliant. So let's get up and running because we've got quite a few things as you can see across here. We've got some books. Thank you guys for bringing in your books. And we've got some games. We'll see if we've got a chance to have a look at these games or talk about them. But we want to go straight in to discussing the life of the Prophet. So the last, just to give a recap, well, actually, Am I going to give the recap? Guys, um, Suleiman, what did we discuss last time? The discussion that we discussed last time was the birth of the Prophet and what an incident is. MashaAllah, yes we did. The incidents around the birth of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Omar, do you want to say anything more about the uh, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam? Because Yasin wasn't there with us, so if you would like to give us a reminder of some other things. Um, he was born on the year of the elephant. That's right. Um, Yes, and do you know about the year of the elephant? No? So, 
Maybe all of you guys that ha- don't know about the year of the elephant, go back to see our, our previous episodes and you'll see what we spoke about. Um, Suleiman, quickly tell us some of the things about the year of the elephant. The year of the elephant? Um, at the first part, I was a bad king, Abraha from Ethiopia. He, um, you know that there's no elephants from Saudi Arabia, so where did he um, uh, get all of these elephants from? He got them from, as you heard, he's from, from Ethiopia, and that's in Africa. So he got all of those um, elephants from Africa at that time. So, and there was these little birds that hold ro- flaming rocks, and and the time that at the time when he was run, like tried to run back home, he died. Hmm. And uh, anything else you want to add to the story, Omar? <laughs> there, there was a there was a leader of the elephants. I forgot the name. Mahmoud, wasn't Mah- it? The main yeah. elephant who led the elephants was called an elephant called Mahmoud. Very good. So yeah, there were some amazing things that we spoke about. Now, we're going to go back in the life of the Prophet and we look at his childhood in a, in a future episode. Today, what I thought would be good is if we look at the specialities of the Prophet. Okay? And as I said last time, there's various books that we always I, I like to recommend. This is more for the, uh, old, the older, uh, older children, but the book called Al-Rahiq al Maktoum, which is the sealed nectar, the English version, is then done by Sheikh Mubarak Puddin. It's a very good book. It won an award which tells the whole life of the Prophet. It's a quite, quite a few pages, um, in the region of about 600 pages in here. It's a very good book. Um, but there's also a very new book, which, um, which has just come out in Medina. And you can get this book from the Medina Museum. Um, next to the Prophet uh, Masjid Nawawi. So this is quite an easy book and it's probably for you younger teenagers. It's a very easy book. Um, so yeah, there's these various books that are out there. But we're, we've also got the children's books here which we're going to look at as well at some point. But we want to look at the specialities of the Prophet. So I'm going to spend this time now looking at the specialities of the Prophet And I'm going to ask you guys and I want you guys at home to join in. When I talk about one of the specialities, I want you to think but do you know somebody that might have that one speciality? Because remember, the Prophet has got many specialities put together. That's why he is a prophet. So, first things first, let's... First, I want to say that when the Prophet name is mentioned, it's almost mentioned immediately after Allah. So, um, Yasin, I'd like you to do the Shahada. Aruz billahi uh, not, 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 Sorry, not, not Surah Fatiha. Do La ilaha illallah for me. La ilaha illallah. Muhammad al Rasulullah. MashaAllah. And you can see from there, La ilaha illallah, Allah is mentioned. And then straight away, Muhammad al Rasulullah. So after Allah, almost immediately we always try to mention um, the Prophet. As I started the show as well, I said, Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. Oh, la ilaha illallah. Bismillah, Alhamdulillah. As salatu as salam wa rasulillah. So I, when I said Allah's name, I also put salawat upon the um, Prophet. So that's immediate first speciality. Now let's go over the names of the Prophets. They say there's about 250 names that the Sahaba gave the Prophet, like Mustafa and these other names. But there are nine names that are that Allah has given. So let's go over these names. Number one is Muhammad. Number two, and there's no order, this is just the order that I've written it down in. Number one, Muhammad. Number two, Ahmad. Number three, Al-Mahi. Number four, Al-Hashir. Number five, Akib. Number six, Nabiyu Rahma. Number seven, Nabiyu Tawbah. Number eight, Mukaffa. And number nine, Nabiyu Malahi. I'd like you guys, because we won't have time on our show today, I'd like you guys to go back with your mums and dads. Those nine names that I've said, go back with your mums and dads and see if you can find the meanings of them. See if you can find out where, where the Prophet Sallallahu was given that name. We're going to touch on a few between us today. First question I want to ask you guys is, the name Muhammad, is it mentioned in the Quran? Who can tell me? Is the name Muhammad mentioned in the Quran? Somebody, put your hands up. Who knows? Omar? Um, yeah. Yes, it is. That's right. Can anyone take a guess how many times Muhammad's name is mentioned? Suleiman, you have a go. Six. Six could be. Omar? Four. Four. I think it's four as well. Please. There's an email running across the bottom. If you know the different answer, email us and let us know. Yes, Yasin. I think it might be three. Three. 
I'm going to go with four for now. I believe it's been mentioned four times in the Quran. But is the Prophet Muhammad's name the most mentioned Prophet's name in the Quran? No? Let me give um, so, um, Yasin a chance. Whose name is mentioned the most, Yasin? You forgot to name it. Uh, Sulaiman. It's, um, it's, um, it's Musa alayhi salam. Musa alayhi salam. Yes, I believe so. So, it's amazing that our Quran was given to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam, but his name is not mentioned the most, is it? It's Musa alayhi salam's name that is mentioned the most. In fact, Musa alayhi salam, Isa alayhi salam, uh, Ibrahim alayhi salam, their names are mentioned more, even Dawood and Yusuf for that matter, actually. Yusuf's got a whole chapter. Their names are mentioned more than the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi salam. So, that's... That's um, the Prophet Muhammad. His other name I want to talk about, Ahmed. Now, Ahmed is a very special name because only one person says the name Ahmed in the Quran, referring to the Prophet Muhammad as Ahmed. And do you know who that is? Omar. Isa. Well done, it is. And I hope you knew the answer at home as well. Isa salam, mentioned the Prophet name Ahmed three times in the Quran. Okay, that's about his name. Um, the meaning of his name, Muhammad, I'd like you guys to spend time with your parents at home just to understand Muhammad, Hamd. Hamd means being thankful, being praised. Okay, so Muhammad, his name Hamd has the word praise in it. So think about why Allah has given him that name, where there's a name of praise in it. We know from our last episode, you two, can you remember? Who named Muhammad? Uh, go on, Sulaiman. Um, it was his uncle. You think it was his uncle? Who do you think it is, Omar? His granddad, Abdul Muttalib. That's correct, it was his uncle, his granddad. From the last episode we spoke about this, his granddad, Abdul Muttalib, named him um, uh, Muhammad. So, the specialities of the Prophet ﷺ. Let's go over these now quickly. Um, first and foremost, he is the final Prophet of Allah. Yasin, after Prophet Muhammad, is there going to be any more Prophets? No. That's right, he's the final Prophet, that's one speciality. Now, this is a special not many people know, and it's a really good thing to learn about. Prophet Muhammad was decreed to be created by Allah even before Allah decreed to create Adam. Did you guys understand that? Did you guys at home understand that? Yeah? Okay, so even before Allah decided to make Adam, السلام, who was the first person, the first human being, he had already decreed. The decree is Allah's decision. Decree is Allah's decision and Allah had decided that Prophet Muhammad would be one of his creations before. So that's another speciality. Now, this is a bit of a trick one. He is the only prophet for all of humanity and all of jinn. Now, do you know of another prophet that was all for uh, humanity and jinn? Sulaiman. Sulaiman alayhi salam. Very good. It's named, uh, yeah, the, the prophet that you've been named after. Sulaiman was also named. However, Sulaiman was only given the ability to communicate with the jinn. Whereas the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam, and we'll talk about that. We're going to come to one of those episodes. He was also given the job to give dawah to the jinn. So, um, yeah, this is, it's another speciality that he had. Okay. Speciality number four that I have listed here. Allah has helped the prophet sallallahu alayhi salam with giving him the ru'ub. The ru'ub. That's a very trick thing. Is it with a ru'ub? I'm sorry, my mistake if it's with an ayn. Maybe it was a hamza. But ru'ub. Omar, can you tell us what the ru'ub is? Is it like our soul? No, that's the ru'ub. So the ru'ub is a, is a speciality where Allah has given that to the Prophet so that his enemies will be scared of him. And we're going to talk about some amazing things that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the miracles that happened to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam with his rule, where his enemies got scared because they saw fiery camels behind him, or they saw fire protecting, or they saw some cam uh, you know, something really um, scary that's made them scared of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. We're going to come across these stories. So Allah gave him the rule. Right. Another speciality which we all know about is Allah gave the Prophet Muhammad the largest ummah out of all of the prophets. So we'll know, that we'll know this in future stories because Musa alayhi salam tells us the story where um, Musa alayhi salam was wishing he had a bigger ummah than the Prophet alayhi salam. But the Prophet alayhi salam is going to have a huge ummah. And inshallah, we are all part of that ummah. And we will all stand behind the Prophet alayhi salam on the Day of Judgment. Okay, a great miracle, a great miracle that the Prophet had was he was given the Qur'an. And maybe I should have said this at the very first one. 
as a speciality that the Prophet was given the Quran. He also had the privilege of doing Isra wal Miraj. Anyone know what Isra wal Miraj is? No? It's when he ascends to the heavens. And we will come to that episode and talk about that. Um, okay. Now, this is a very special one. Um, well, sorry, I should say number eight is he's the leader of all of humanity, the Sayyid of mankind. Number nine is an amazing one, so not everybody seems to know about this one. Another, number nine is a speciality of the Prophet ﷺ. Is after the second trumpet is blown for the start of the Day of Judgment, the Prophet Muhammad ﷺ will be the first person to be resurrected. Okay? Um, he will also be, number ten, straight after that, he will be the first human to be clothed on the Day of Judgment. Number eleven. He will have the largest pond in heaven, the Hawd. And we prayed and we, we asked Allah to allow us to be able to drink from the Hawd. We have to drink from the pond of the Prophet. So he's going to have the largest one. Okay? Um, he'll also be the first to cross the bridge of Sirat. Again, guys, this is, um, they, they, and children at home as well, to have this discussion with your parents and talk about these things because we're going to cover it later on but you might want to know now and we don't have the time to cover it today so speak with your parents and talk about um, these things so the Sirat bridge what is the Sirat bridge on the Day of Judgment we'll talk about that at some point soon but we know that Prophet is going to be the first person to cross the bridge of Sirat okay the Prophet's Ummah will be the first to enter Jannah okay and the Prophet will be blessed with the highest level of Jannah he will have the highest Okay, so those are the 14 um, special gifts, shall we say, or special things that Allah has given the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And that's, that's going to be the end of our looking at the Prophet's life and looking at the seed. And look. So we looked at specialities. We want to look at some good deeds now. So I'm going to, before we do anything and discuss anything, I'm going to introduce a video that I want to watch. I want you guys to watch this video. And us, we're going to watch this video too. And then let's have a discussion after we see the video. That was an amazing uh, video there, and um, it's lovely to see a family like that together. What um, you know? Let's let's talk about that video um, because uh, yes, in you see that video, they the family played together. What do you think about? Tell us, tell us your thoughts. What do you think about playing together? How, what, what's a good I thing about? What maybe tell us some bad things about it? It's a good thing to keep everything tidy when you get one game out. Okay, and then playing together. You saw that family together playing together. Was that a nice feeling? Yes. And tell us about, do you play games at home with your mum and dad? Sometimes. Yeah? What sort of games do you play? Um, snakes and ladders and Connect Four. Wow, okay. And it's just like that video, you, you play together with your family, don't you? Yeah? Um, Omar, let me ask you, um, we're looking at good deeds now. Is it a good thing to play together or do you think, no, you should do it on your own, you should do your homework on your own and be moody and not talk to anyone? It's a good, it's a good thing to play together because you, if you play alone, it will feel a little bit boring, but playing together, it, it feels more fun. Mm. Solomon, do you like, um, have, you got, have you got other brothers and sisters? Yeah. And do you play together with your brother? Yeah. Yeah? What sort of things do you do? I played this this game called uh, uh, Quran Junior. It's all about the prophets. Wow. Would you play with your mum and dad and your little brother? Yeah. Um, and if, if people play together with their families, 
Um, what's the good thing about that? Um, Go on, Yasin. I think the good thing is that you're spending time with your family more. Very good, yeah. Omar? When you need to tidy things away, they could help you, like tidying the game away. And do it as a teamwork, isn't yeah. it? Very good. So we said togetherness, we said teamwork. So the is there, give me some other good things about... Sometimes when you even play, you're actually sometimes learning. Yeah, so you get some learning from each other. So these are some great things, as you can see from the... You know, these small good deeds, they keep together. But is there a good feeling? Is there a good feeling when you play together? Yeah? And you want that good feeling. And the Prophet wasallam, several times tells us throughout his life, shows us in his life and tells us in hadith about doing things together, about being together. Now, I, um, we saw this family playing together. I want to ask you guys, can you name times in, your, in the year for Islamic reasons you're doing things together? Go on, Yasin, can you think of one? No. Suleiman? Iftar. Very good. Iftar is a beautiful time when you get together. And that gives you that togetherness feel. Omar? Um, Ramadan and Eid. Ramadan and Eve in Ramadan throughout the day, yet yeah, we've started one of the times and throughout the day of Ramadan you get together and Eve day after Ramadan you get together. If I was to say to you guys that we as Muslims like to get together every day. What do I mean by that? When we do Salah, when we do Salah and we, we, go, to the masjid. we go to the Masjid, we get together with our people in the Masjid. So Allah has given us this beautiful way of us having so many reasons to get together but we can make our own reasons too Allah gave us Salah gave us Ramadan gave us Eid there's more than that I know mean, you guys forgot to mention Hajj in Hajj do not millions of people get together in one place on the planet yeah? and then we have reason on your birthday you're saying well you want to get the family together and feed people it's a sunnah to bring people to your house and feed them so you have reason to bring people over, you have da'wah. And we, as we saw in this beautiful video, you had the reason of um, just doing things together without any excuse. You didn't need a birthday, you didn't need any celebration or anything. It, it wasn't a special occasion, it was just a family get together. So I hope you guys at home spend the time getting together. <laughs>
When you're ready, go. It's um, Prince Harry and Prince... Prince William? Yeah. Oh, Prince Harry's brother, very good. Um, the sound goes ding, 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 ding. Doorbell? Doorbell? I just I see, I see the, 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 the Yeah. Oh, very good. Add, uh, subtracting and... Subtracting and addition, or adding. Yeah. Very good. A water man. Water man? No, no, water no. bottle? Yeah. But, ah. See, so sometimes... Oh, carry on. Come on let's Instagram get, and... Instagram and Facebook? Facebook, yeah. Yeah. Very okay. good. It's not very easy, is it? You have to describe it. Yes, and I'm going to give you a go. All right. Ah. And you know what? The actual game says that you've got this timer and you're supposed to do it before the clock. Before the timer runs out. Mm. So go, go, go. Start doing it. So, he's a, he fights villains. And he fights he's a villains. hero. Superhero. Yes. Superhero, very good. Next one. Where do you buy toys? A toy shop. Yes. What, what are you wearing right now? Clothes. Clothes. No. A t uh, cardigan. T-shirt, yes. T-shirt, okay. Who gives presents on Christmas? Santa. Yes. Very good. What is the circle? What is Sophia? Sophia. No. It's is made of Semi made of juice. Orange juice. Yes. Ah. It's like a magazine, but for children. It has pictures. A comic. Yes. Very good. Very good. Excellent. That's actually quite hard, but yeah. Did you guys enjoy that? Would you like to do that with your families? No? Yes, it said no. <laughs> well, you're looking for reasons to do things with your family. That's a great way because maybe you understand your family better than somebody else. And so you would get together and you know what they're describing. As you would have noticed, I could catch on, especially what Omar was describing, because we know each other. So somebody might describe something that nobody else knows. And that's how you build a bond. And these are some of the good things because uh, th let's, let's round off now. We're going to just talk about good morals here. And our, our moral for today is togetherness. And to, why are we talking about togetherness? Because we saw the family on the video, they're having that together feeling. And we spoke about the benefits and what's lovely about being together. We had an activity, we did an exercise, we played a game of togetherness. We're going to have another go at that game next week at some point. But we tried all these different things. And we, um, <coughs> we also looking at the, we looked at the specialities of the Prophet. And what, a few things that we spoke about, which is about togetherness, was when the Prophet's going to have the biggest Ummah in the Day of Judgment and the Prophet's going to have the biggest Hawl, the biggest fountain where we're all going to be together with the Prophet inshallah and drinking from that pool. So togetherness you can see is such an important thing and why do we want to stay together? It's because we want to have that feeling of being part of something special. Allah has given us Islam, the way of life that makes us feel together, makes us feel part of it. So I hope inshallah you benefit from that. Spend some time, mums and dads as well that are watching, spend some time with your children talking about togetherness. And there's so many possible examples of togetherness that I could have spoken about, even in Islam, which I didn't. So many other things. We touched on Hajj, we touched on Ramadan. But yeah, mums and dads, spend time with your, with, with your children at home talking about togetherness. You guys as well, spend time talking about togetherness. We've run out of time. Time goes so quickly. Have you enjoyed the show, Yasin, as our new guest? Yeah. yeah? Um, Omar, did you learn some good things from the Sira today? Uh, yeah. And Solomon, did you learn some good things from the good deeds today? Yeah. Inshallah. I pray you at home have also learned and benefit from this show. We look to see you again in our next episode of Islam, the way of life, our new show from Ikra. Until, we, until then, wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.